Hello and good morning, Stephen. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I want to say congratulations on the Barbecue Bible, but what right there at the very beginning of this book, you go, this isn't all about me. Thousands of people came together to make this thing happen. Uh, it takes a village, as the saying goes, to, uh, to write a book this size. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm here in the South, so anytime the word barbecue comes up, you know those, those are either going to be fighting words or sit down and let's have some lunch. I mean, we, we love barbecue here in the South. Uh, well, you know, it turns out that people love barbecue pretty much everywhere yeah. in the world. And that was the, uh, the premise of the book was that grilling is the most uh, universal method of cooking, but everywhere people do it differently. So I packed a suitcase and set out to travel and uh, document how people grill and barbecue in different countries and cultures. Was it a way that the reason why we got into barbecuing was, was, it, was it a way of preserving food? Why is it that the world embraced this? Well... I mean, first of all, uh, you know, I think we owe uh, our current civilization to barbecue because about 1.8 million years ago, a distant human ancestor called Homo erectus discovered that you could roast meat uh, over fire, with live fire. And that led to a quadrupling of the size of the human brain. It led to all sorts of behaviors uh, that we recognize today, the division of labor, for example, the communal sharing of meal. Uh, the uh, gift of speech uh, with our increased brain power. Uh, and if you look at a gorilla, you know, giant jaws, giant mouth. Well, when you cook your meat, you don't need such big musculature in the face. Yeah. So uh, our mouths shrunk, our brains increased. We got the gift of language, and here we are uh, two million years later, and we've uh, dominated the planet. But seriously, uh, and I know, I mean, that's all true, and I believe that that's one of the reasons that people respond on such a visceral emotional level to barbecue why it's so universal uh the other reason is simply that most foods just taste better cooked yeah. over live fire yeah i agree with you on that because i'm a professional rver and i i, I swear this summer this book is probably going to be in the majority of every one of those rvs because they take it seriously at those campfires fantastic there's so many different ways of, of preparing the food, and I, I want, that's what I like about the Barbecue Bible, is that you show us different ways to cut the chicken, to prepare the fish, and, and it's like you're sitting right here with us going, okay, let's, let's take this one step at a time, this is going to be a great meal, it's going to be barbecue, you won't forget. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I see myself as a teacher as much as as a writer. And I know that when I was writing Barbecue Bible, I had to figure all this stuff out. You know, I, I mean, I grilled, right? I have a Y chromosome. We, we all think, all guys think that they know how to grill, you know, the minute they're born. <laughs> uh, but in fact, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of technique uh, involved with grilling. It's not complicated or difficult, but, you know, it's stuff you got to learn. So the first uh, 50 pages of Barbecue Bible are really devoted to explaining how to buy a grill, what to look for, how to set it up, the five methods of live fire cooking, the accessories that you'll need for grilling, uh, a list of questions, common questions. You know, my website, barbecuebible.com, and my TV shows like Primal Grill, uh, Project Smoke, Project Fire, and the new Planet Barbecue coming out uh, in, at the end of May. I get a lot of questions, so I, I I'm sort of I have a sense of what where the stumbling blocks are and what people uh, need to know. And all of this information I tried to put into Barbecue Bible. Stephen, you do something that's really original here, and that is is that you also show the side dishes. I mean, you've got a whole entire section here on the bread, and that's important to a lot of people because what am I going to mix with my barbecue? Uh, it, it is very important, and you know I'm going to tell you about one dish that I really love. It's super simple, but uh, it's called Catalan tomato bread. And I make it all the time when people come to my house. So it's slices of grilled French bread, uh, toasted on the grill, and then you give every guest a clove of garlic and a half a tomato, and you instruct them to rub the garlic and tomato into the hot grilled bread. Uh, a little drizzle of olive oil, uh, a little uh, sprinkle of salt and pepper, and you were tasting one of the most explosively flavorful appetizers on the planet. Mm. It took all of five minutes to prepare, super simple, and everybody gets involved. So many times people will go, okay, we're going to have a barbecue, and they go out and they get a rack of ribs. 
but yet not in the in in the uh, the barbecue Bible. You show different cuts of beef, which opens up the imagination. Going, wait a second, I see this kind of meat at my local grocery store, or when I go to go to a flea market. I mean, they're, 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 I, I could be doing something other than ribs. Absolutely, uh, you know the world of barbecue. It's a, even the world of ribs. I mean, there are five different kinds of ribs, right? You've got baby backs, you've got spare ribs, you've got uh, country style ribs, you have rib tips, beef ribs, lots of different kinds of beef short ribs, beef long ribs, and that's what I mean about you know um, trying to organize all this information. I think before Barbecue Bible, certainly for me, it was out there floating, but nobody had put it in one place. And that was my goal in writing Barbecue Bible, to kind of bring all the un- information between two covers. Of course, I thought when I set out to write the book, it was going to be a quick 100-page book, <laughs> and, you know, it morphed into this 550-page monster. But, you know, uh, I guess that's the reason why we called it the Bible. Oh, wait, in, in my neighborhood, it, it's, it's the conversation piece, because we've all been sitting there going, okay, on this weekend, we're going to do this. Okay, who's going to be in charge of that? I mean, because you talk about avocados, you talk about every, so many different side dishes, and, and even for vegetarians, you give them a place where we can do something and grow into something new. Um, vegetarian is, uh, you may have been surprised to find such a large yes. vegetable chapter uh, in the book. Now it comes time for confession. Uh, my wife and daughter are vegetarians, so uh, I, uh, you know, needed to uh, needed to have big veg- grilled vegetable chapter in the book as uh, well as uh, all the meat to, to uh, satisfy my uh, carnivorous readers. How do you grow from here? I realize you've got the the, the new show starting up in May. I mean, it's like th- this book is the the starter, but at the same time, w- will you travel to more countries? Will there be other forms of of cooking that you're going to start exploring? Well, funny you should ask. I'm actually uh, leaving for Paris on Monday. I'm going to be the guest of honor at the French Barbecue Expo. Uh, I speak French. I've actually done a number of uh, TV shows in French uh, in uh, Montreal. Uh, and on my travels, I'll be going to Italy and Spain. I am, I'm, I won't say I'm working on a new book, but I'm thinking about a new book. Uh, you know, all of these stand-up outdoor griddles, uh, griddle books like the Blackstone mm. uh, uh, and the uh, and, and the Traeger and the Weber. Well, I'm very fascinated by that cooking. It's not open flame live fire cooking, but there's something about when food hits hot metal uh, that gives you the same kind of charring and caramelization that you get with grilling. Yeah, I love that smell. Uh, that instant smell. It's like, oh yeah, that, I'm here. You bet. Oh, and, then, and then you slowly. That's it. That's it. And, and and being being the the master chef on 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 the grill. I mean, still that that to me that's like uh, you, you get to tease yourself as that thing starts. You know, really starting to get ready to you know for for the meal itself. Uh, it does, and you know, you bring up a good point, and that is that. Um, Take the extra time to get your grill uh, nice and hot. Yep. You know, your food will come out so much better. There's nothing worse than premature grilling, you know, when, when the meat stews rather than sears. Oh, I blew that. My, my first dinner for my, for, for my stepdaughter, and I said, I'm going to make you barbecued ribs, and they were pink. I blew it, dude. And I, that's why books like this really have become, you know, my, my place of, of resource. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people making mistakes, but then you come by and you correct us, sir. Well, uh, you know, we all kind of learn the hard way, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm still learning, you know. I, uh, every time I travel, I see a new dish, I, uh, I see a new technique. Um, uh, it's funny, Julia Child, you know, once I, I knew her when I was just starting out as a writer, and she gave me some advice that proved invaluable. And she said, pick a subject with very broad appeal. Well, you know, you don't get it broader than barbecue. Everybody in the world loves barbecue. And then take an approach that you and only you can do. So for me, it was, you know, packing my suitcase, traveling the world's barbecue trail, and uh, learning what I could in all the different grill cultures. Please come back to this show anytime in the future, Stephen. The door is always going to be open for you. I would love to, and uh, thank you, and wishing you a happy grilling season. You bet. You be brilliant today, okay, sir? Take care.